Okay, today doing a video on the uh, Mako 75 orange, orange pumpkin. Um, actually, one is mine and one is a uh, customer's. I said I'm not going to, you know, do any more customers. And the guy said, hey, can you fix my Mako 75? I got two. Can you fix them? And I was like, nope, I don't want nothing to do with... Uh, Mako 75s, they are not an easy fix, and um, tubes are expensive, and uh, they're supercharged, you know, tetrode mode modulators, and um, um, it's a lot that can go wrong, and people overdrive them and kill the power supply, the transformer, and all that, and I'm like, nope, don't want to do it, and the guy finally said, well, I'll tell you what, you know, he got two non-working ones. And if I fix one, he would give me one. I was like, okay, I kind of like Mako 75s, you know. Um, um, so I said, deal. And then um, he sent me some pictures. And, you know, not only were they not working, they were missing some stuff. Um, but he sent the pictures first. You know, he said, uh, okay, you know, uh, 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 what do they call that? Uh, truth and honesty or, you know, um uh, I forgot the other word, um, tram doctor's getting old, but, um, full disclosure, I guess, um, he sent the, uh, pictures and showed what was missing and all that before we sealed the deal, and I was like, oh boy, here we go, but they look pretty good, um, um, so I said, okay, I'll go ahead with the deal anyway, because, you know, I, I think I already got a Mako 75 that's been highly modified, not by me, and, uh, um, the though these were missing a lot of stuff, they looked um, fairly original. Transformers didn't look blown, but they were missing a lot of power supply stuff. So um, what we did, we took the one that had the most stuff in it because they look very similar, you know, as far as um, physically. So we took the one that um, had the most stuff in it still, and uh, we worked on that one, and we got that one done. And uh, we're going to ship it back uh, to the seller. And uh, this one here, I should have kept it open on the bottom, but I wanted to show what they look like uh, fully dressed. So this one is still missing a lot of components, especially power supply components. Looked like somebody was playing with them and uh, didn't know what they were doing. And uh, this, you know, stripped all the power supply stuff and kind of gave up, I guess. So. Um, it was the same with this one, but this one was not missing as much. So we got it off right now. Mako 75 is a one tuber. Um, supposed to use an M2057, which is like a big, bag, bad, heavy duty version of the um, 8950. And the 8950 is a 12 volt, volt version of a 6LF6. However, M2057s are very hard to come by and they're very expensive. So are 8950s, but uh, M27s even more so because, you know, it's a big bad tube and, you know, probably hasn't been made since the 80s and, um, um, you know, supply and demand, I guess. So I had a, uh, it didn't come, neither one came with tubes, so I had a, a good 8950 laying around, so I stuck an 8950 in it there. Um, the Mako 75s are one tuber and they're modulators um, actually I think they run class C they're very dirty boxes so you know if TVI and RFI is a problem for you then these are not the boxes for you um, they are nasty however um, you want some audio um, Mako 75 and the Super Mako 75 uses two tubes um, you know, basically the same box is up uh, two tubes, heft heftier transformer and power supply, and it does twice as much. But um, these Mako modulators are some nasty boxes. The normal Mako amplifiers, you know, like the 200, 300, 500, you know, uh, 750, 1000, uh, they're not set up to be modulators. They're basic grounded grids, so you don't have the nastiness problem that these have but you also don't have nowhere near the swing and um, modulation that these have you know it's like one or the other you you can't have it both ways so the Mako Duster Mobile was also a 2-2 mobile version of this back in the day and uh, 
the two tube uh, duster with the M twenty fifty sevens, it would you know uh, dead key about fifty, swing about five hundred in the mobile, and that thing was a modulating monster. That thing was mean back in the day. It was hard for uh, you know uh, eight PO and and all that transistors boxes to take that uh, you know five hundred watt uh, audio duster out. So anyway, uh, we gonna flip it over. Not much on the top, just a transformer. Rather small because again, this is RAN Class C, so it doesn't need a super heavy duty transformer. And um, it was a lot missing. Um, no caps, uh, some diodes missing, some other parts missing, a uh, little mini diode on the relay board uh, was missing. Um, the second one that I got doesn't even have a relay board in it. It's missing this whole um, that's the preamp and the keying board here and that's the main relay. That's the um, relay for the preamp here and both were missing all the power supply caps and, and all that um, was missing these little uh, caps here that go to the bias and without them you're not going to get any voltage going to the bias power supply and I could see why somebody gave up on it um, if you don't know what you're doing with amps you ain't got a clue stay out of this thing um, actually no bleeders uh, are on these from the factory and um, I put these bleeders here you know across the caps because I don't want to get zapped playing with this thing and uh, with no bleeders this thing would hold a charge all day long all month long and, and in it but this is the inside this is a tetro turbocharged amp um, right here's the high voltage power supply and the caps and the bleeders and it takes half of that center tap and comes over here and that's um, half high voltage that goes to the screen which is the turbocharger and um, that's that right side of right here with that resistor there and a couple other things and also because that turbocharger always need that intercooler I say it needs a lot of bias and these run at 150 volts of negative bias a lot of bias without that bias these tubes are cherry right up and uh, you know go into thermal runaway gotta have a bias on these and it doesn't have a bias tap on the transformer so they take a um, these caps here and it trickles off that um, high voltage transformer you know because the transformer you're going positive negative positive negative um, Oh, honey's called him. Yeah, I'll be there in a second. Um, so the bias comes down through these. Um, it's trickled down off the uh, transformer through these caps. And over here is the bias, negative bias um, power supply, filter diodes, capacitor um, up there. And then that bias is regulated by a zener up here, which this amp didn't have in it. Um, and then that negative bias goes to the grid of the tube to keep it um, in thermal, keep it from running away and, uh, and overloading and running hot and cherrying up. A lot of amps where I hear people like, you know, it this cherries up and, uh, you know, goes in the, uh, turns red and overheats. That's normally the bias. So anyway, we're going to turn it on. And it's, it does have this, it does have a tune and a load. I actually think that's the load but anyway um, you tune there tune and load and there's a variable on the inside right there that's not a pot that's a variable air capacitor with no knob on it and uh, that's the high voltage runs at about um, you know uh, 950 volts so be careful tuning that thing and there's no way to tune it uh, from underneath either so you have to actually uh, get some pliers or something insulated or use your hands and grab that and just be careful if you're going to tune that um, it don't let that 900 volts hit you that uh, actually may kill you um, on the front pretty basic no meter no metering um, just um, main power on off standby on off I think um, standby is in the middle 
up is running the amp without the preamp and down is running the preamp on even though I'm on a dummy load uh, you can't hear it now there you go you can hear the extra noise when I turn the preamp on coming out the radio maybe you can hear it preamp um, it works it works good but I don't like preamps in um, amplifiers they're not uh, basically filtered uh, so they let the noise and everything else come through is just as much as the signal then AM SSB switch right there you got a little light that um, indicates power you know it lights bright as you modulate and all that and that's about all to this thing and uh, we ought to be warmed up enough and um, hopefully tuned up and we'll start with the meters on a 20 watt scale Come on over here, Mike. So that's the watts going into this thing. Audio, audio, mud duck radio, dead can two and a half. Audio, audio, swinging about three. That's going into it. And this the output. 20 watt scale. I'm dead can four and a half. And um that's on average, so we got to put it on the 200 because you've seen the thing about the bang in the corner. 200 watt scale, audio, audio on average. What's in about 80? Audio, audio, audio. Talking about 35, 40. Uh, actually, I hit up about 55, almost 60 when I get... Uh, Long and it audio. And we gonna put this one on peak and we gonna put that one on peak too. Um, this is peak while it's going into it. Audio, 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 about nine watts peak and 200 watt scale on peak watts. Audio, audio, audio. Audio, audio, doing about 110, 115. If we let it heat up a little bit and uh, tuned it a little bit more, we hit about 140 before we started turning around and playing with it and doing all kind of other stuff. But um, And if it had the big bad M2057 in it instead of the um, 8950 tube, it could hit about 200 if you had a good M2057. But a good M2057 tube goes for about... Uh, about a hundred good hundred bucks each for a good one audio 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 but anyway that's the uh, JB12 the JB uh, Mako 75